so this is a very cool thing. It is what I call the day shaper. Um, it is something that was actually developed uh, by a colleague of mine. And I just love the concept and how it fits in with um, time blocking and visualizing your time for my creative people. So um, I don't know. I just kind of thought it would be a good day to do it as I've been working with it a little bit myself the last couple days, um, trying to get stuff squared away. Um, all right. I just need to finish one little adjustment so I can see my notes about it. Okay. Um, perfect. So we are talking about how to visualize time. Last week, we talked a lot about how much time things actually take and how to start recognizing that. And this is the way to use the other end of the knowledge and figure out how to structure your day from the knowledge of the things you have to get done and being better aware of how long they take. So what, um, it's not time blocking specifically, but the two are really connected. And so it, it's just nice to be able to visualize how things relate to each other and how they're going to affect your whole day. And this is the a fantastic way to um, get creative while you do that. So in a way, it's making a day, a map of your day, and it can take whatever format you like. You can be as fancy as strikes you today and different tomorrow, um, and you can use whatever medium you like. Um, I have my couple favorites, but I'm going to show you kind of three things that'll help you just kind of visualize what I'm talking about here. And as a bonus tip, it, you get to use up some of your um, old office supplies as you play around with it and come up with your own way of doing it. So you want to start with a list of things you need to do and an idea of about how long you want to work in the day. So I actually have two versions of the day shaper that I use. Um, and I typically use one format, but I wanted to show you the options I played with as I figured it out. Um, so I love Ugmuk cards and you can um, get these. I'll, I'll provide a, li a link um, as these get posted, but um, it's basically a, a three by five index cards that has today and you, there's a place for the date and then you fill in what those items are. And then um, to shape the day, you create shapes representing the relationship of various points in time. So this is my seven hour day uh, when I wanna do a bit of a longer day. And so there's one block that's three hours and two blocks that make up the same amount of time that become two 90 minute blocks. And then there's one that is uh, a third of it and that is a 60 minute block. So now I have some kind of relational pattern that my brain can wrap its head around um, for structuring the day. Therefore, it's a day shaper. See, I'm shaping my day. So then I can take the tasks from the front side of the card and I can put them into the appropriate block. So typically the 60 minute section is my administrative tasks and the three hour section is my client work. And then the two 90 minute sections tend to be my um, creative or project work, but it can look a little different. Sometimes I only want to do a four hour day and I'm just showing you with different materials so you can see how you can use up those office supplies. This is the same structure looking a little different. I have a piece of paper. My junior legal pads are a favorite of mine. Um, administrative tasks go in here. My two blocks of project tasks and my one bigger block of more work. But in this case, this one's 90 minutes, these reach 45 minutes, and this is still 60 minutes because administrative tasks tend to take about the same amount of time every day, but it could be a little shorter as well on a day you don't want to work as much. So it just shows you that this is what four hours could break down in and how you can create blocks that work for you. Now, the woman who developed this loves 
other shapes. So she uses kind of a mind map looking thing that has the most important task in the middle. And then there's various shapes around. There's stars, there's ovals, there's squares, there's rectangles. Some are rounded, some are square, square. She gets to play around with it that way. Um, but another way to think about it is, can you create some... Um, these are like uh, project trackers. And so these represent chunks of time I spent working on the project. You can use stuff like that. Um, you can use any kind of medium. You can do it with collage. You can do it all on the computer. You can do it with pencils and templates and stencils, stickers, however you like to do it. It could just be post-its on your desk and you use the different size post-its for the different blocks of time. Whatever way you like, you can do it. You can do it in your calendar or on a pad of paper or on a big wall, chalkboard, whiteboard. See what I'm saying? You get to get super creative here. So um, anyway, you just decide how you want to divide up the day and you start adding the things from your list into the various blocks of time that are represented by a shape. And you get to decide how you want to do it. Um, early days, I used to divide my day into morning, afternoon, and evening. Um, it's a great starting point if you um, don't have some other categories already picked. But as I said, now I've moved on to I have administrative, client, creative, and personal time. By the way, the personal time is represented. I just realized I'm not looking at the camera. Make sure I'm pointing in the right direction. Um, I put personal tasks in the bottom area because often they're things that are just like a few seconds here and there or a few minutes here and there. And sometimes I finish something early and I can do those or I can do a bigger block, another block in the morning and evening. So it's a great way to start breaking things up into your projects. Um, and it's a great way of, of guaranteeing that things don't uh, fall through the cracks because you're connecting them to how your day unfolds. Um, also, if you do it more of a mind map style where the shapes are not right next to each other, you can get that begin to get that sense of buffer time as well. So make sure that you don't overlook the buffer time. Um, I'm just kind of used to it. And I like the small version of those Ugma cards. But, um, you know, it's just a three by five index card. Um, so you get to decide what shapes and that can be fun. And then as you finish the tasks, you get to decide how you're going to um, mark that they're done. Do you want to color it in? Do you want to put a sticker over it? Do you want to slap um, some paint over the top or stick a pretty picture over it? Or do you want to do it the other way and stick stickers over it and then you peel them off to reveal um, rewards underneath. So there's a few different ways. But what you want to consider is that the shapes you create are the containers and how much uh, you can fit in that container becomes easier to visualize because you're actually putting tasks in there. And as that fills up, you realize, oh, that's all the time I have in there. Okay. So I will see you next week. In the meantime, subscribe, like, follow, comment, tell all your friends, and uh, be sure to join us next week and have a delightful day.